Now, this is the landing gear of the Boeing 737. Obviously, very sturdy. And it has to be very sturdy to hold off all those Ryanair landings. But one thing we all know about the 737 is that it definitely cannot go off-road because it isn't that sturdy after all. But I thought we might be able to change that. And last night I watched the Grand Tour episode where, where Richard Hammond had his Ford Focus modified to use tracks of a tank. Continuous tracks make sense, you know, the reason to use them is that instead of tires, that it spreads the force from the weight of the vehicle over a larger contact area, which means there will be less pressure on the ground, and so you'll be less likely to dig yourself in when traveling over soft ground, something that might just happen on the very heavy Boeing 737. Long story short, um, let's put um, tank tracks to the Boeing 737 and use it as landing gear. I've always been a genius. And I mean, for the X-Plane Flight Simulator, there is a tank. There has been a tank for years. Um, we might be able to, yeah, let's do this. All right, my friends, look at the tank version of the Boeing 737-800. Um, I know this is going to go brilliantly. I just know. I mean, okay, before this, uh, before we take off, there are obviously some, some doubts. Tanks are not necessarily known for speed, nor are the tracks. I don't think they'll be able to hold up, accelerating up to 200 kilometers per hour. I mean, the fastest tank, the T-14 Armata, only goes up to 90 kilometers per hour. Um, I think in real life, we're just, this thing would just fall apart. Um, now, we do still have our front landing gear, which kind of diminishes the whole purpose, really, because it's all about not digging into ground. But I kind of want to see, are we able to take off at all? What? Well, Welcome aboard the beautiful 737-800. So let's go. Full power. We have good enough ground clearance. Let's go take off. Let's release the brakes. And this is definitely a good thing about having a track vehicle like this. You have lots of brakes because all of those little wheels there are able to brake. Um, I just realized... I think I put the tra tank tracks too close together. And so this airplane doesn't really... Oh, that was close to an uh, engine strike. But look, despite our immense amount of wheels, we're able to somewhat accelerate. We just need a bit of a longer runway. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if the whole friction of having a literal tank down there is simulated here. Let's go take off. Are we able to do that? Come on. You should be. You, you can't... You, you, oh, barely. Yes! I mean, also, having this tank landing gear probably isn't the most aerodynamic thing. That probably won't be too bad. Problem is, I can't uh, put the landing gear up. So it will stay... It will stay down. But I guess before we move on any further, I think I should... I think I should replace the nose landing gear with a tank track. That will be amazing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome aboard the sturdiest 737 in the world. We now have nose landing gear and main landing gear replaced with tank stuff. The thing is, this is obviously a stupid idea. Now we don't have any, any nose wheels doing. I don't even know if we're going to take off at all. Come on, full power. All is well. Yes. Now we have a little bit more friction, that is for sure. And I have no steering. I have no steering whatsoever. We only have the rudder. And we do have the braking that we can direct either to the left or right landing gears. So that's not too bad. So come on. Come on. Move. Move now. Yes. And it's moved. The 737 tank is flying. I mean, it is flying quite all right. I'm just kind of curious, though. I think landing should not be a problem whatsoever. So let's go ahead and attempt exactly that. Once again, we now have the massive braking power of 18 wheels that can stop this airplane. Instead of just three, you know what I mean? So this should be, this should be hilariously good. There is our runway. Let's go ahead and land down there. I mean, aerodynamically, this plane still performs quite well. It's a shame, though. I haven't been able to come up with a mechanism to put them up. Uh, all right. All right. Are you ready to see the best stopping power in the world? Come on. Let's pull that off. Runway 06 is there. Let's land now. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Decent landing. Let's go full power into the braking, and you can see all those landing gears can stop the airplane immensely quickly. Actually, not as quickly as I thought, but still immensely quickly. Look at that. We're able to stop without any problems. Now, we might have some of those... <coughs> They're on fire, right? They're a bit on fire, but that's no problem. Yeah, tanks are not really easy on roads normally, as you hear. The main point of such a landing and configuration is, of course, off-roading. Let's fly an airport that does not have, yeah, a paved runway at all. Yeah, let's fly to Wiltsburg, Lindau. All right, I don't know where the 
Is that the runway over there? That seems a little bit dangerous, but no problem for our off-road 737. That seems like a concept that they would have come up with like in wartime. Oh, we want to have a jet that lands on anything? We just built this. Uh, uh, is that the runway? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, the runway is really short. It's not only grass, but it's short. Okay, come on, you can do it. Yes, let's ignore that tree that is on final. I don't know who put that one there. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Now I need you, landing gear. Come on, stop the airplane. Yes, that is working. Barely. This is not a very long runway, but... I think also the problem is that we'll have probably completely el eliminated the grass area right there. We've completely broken the airport. That quite surprises me. I mean, the stopping distance isn't even that better. Uh, you know what, everybody? I think I've, I've successfully ruined the 737. I mean, I can't even, like, steer the airplane on the ground. Uh, I mean, okay, I could use differential thrust like that. Come on, differential thrust, right engine. Yes, just a bit. Okay, right engine is giving in full power. Maybe we could reverse the left engine fully. Like that. Like that. And then we'll sh we should be able to move, you know? Yes. Never mind, I think I've made the 737 better. Look how maneuverable and steerable it is. Yes. I've actually massively improved the Boeing 737. I'm very proud of it. I mean, I... Okay, I can't really... Can't really do a 180 or anything. Anyway, let's do some good runway tests here at Courchevel Airport. Full power, everything is looking good. Yeah, it's just a bit of friction. Nothing to worry about. Okay, tank 737, are you able to do this? Let's put the flaps down right now. At Courchevel Airport, we probably, probably suck. I mean, uh, taking off is a lot worse. Uh, okay, we're in trees. No problem. No problem. Just a few problems. Okay, we need a bit more power and airspeed to keep this airplane flying, but we should be able to land. Come on. The Tank 737. I have no idea why no one's ever tried to put continuous tracks on a on an airplane. Obviously, since it works so well, according to my experiment. Come on. Let's keep it flying. Let's keep it good. All right, hard landing. Nothing to worry about. It's time to stop, 737. It's time to stop. It's time to stop. I've massively improved the Boeing 737, and uh, I I reject any critics. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching this uh, stupid video. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.